Good evening and welcome. It is 6 p.m. and there being a quorum of council present, I call the city council regular meeting of December 13th, 2021 to order. At this time, I'd like to recognize Pastor Alvin Summers of the First Baptist Church East Campus to provide our invitation. Let us pray. Gracious God, for the gift of your presence, your power, your provision for our lives, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for mercy and grace that continues to keep us, guide us, and protect us. We celebrate you for this time of year. God, while we bustle around, it's really about the fact that you came, and we appreciate that so much. I pray God's strength and direction over this body as they adjudicate issues and situations concerning this city. May you be glorified, may people be strengthened, helped, and encouraged. And then, Lord, in a very practical way, will you give them the wisdom they need to do what's in the best interest of all constituents. We love you, we thank you, and we praise you for the gift of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in you. We give you glory. In the great name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Pastor Summers, for providing a wonderful prayer. Our first order of business on the agenda will be the oath of office, and I'm up. So if my family would join me up here. Thank you. 
Okay, and now we'll ask James Carr and anyone he would wish to have uh, stand with him to come forward for his oath of office. <coughs> She wishes to stand with her to come forward for her oath of office. I move that we elect uh, Gary Anderson as Mayor Pro Tem. All right, we've got a motion. Uh, Gary Anderson to be Mayor Pro Tem. I'd like to make the motion to um, elect myself as mayor. As mayor or mayor pro tem? Mayor pro tem. Okay, there was a, a motion on the floor, though. Do we have a second of that motion? I second it. Okay, second by Ms. Thompson. Motion on the uh, I think it's, this would be more appropriate for it to open up nominations, so I think you could treat yeah. the first as a nomination. Okay. And then Councilmember James has made a nomination, but there's not a second of her nomination, so it would be appropriate, Mayor, to call for a second for any nomination for Councilmember uh, James. Is there a second? Okay. Hearing none, the nominations are closed. All Actually, in? Mayor, I would suggest you move to close nominations. Okay. Move to close the nominations in, please. And uh, would this be a member would need to make a motion to close the nominations. So move. And then you would need a second. Okay. Second. Okay. All right. And then it's just to vote to close the nominations. So it would be all in favor to close the nominations, Mayor. Okay. And, uh, all in favor of closing the nominations. And I'm going to ask if you would signify by raising a hand with the mask. It's very difficult for the clerk to get a, uh, a vote. So. So nominations are closed, and uh, those in uh, 
in favor of Mr. Uh, Gary Anderson as Mayor Pro Tem, signify by raising your hand. Okay, congratulations, Gary. Thank you. <coughs> uh, next order of business is we want to recognize <coughs> some very special young ladies here tonight from the Union Academy Charter School volleyball team. As you know, you can only have one champion a year, whether it's national, state, or city. And uh, the Union Academy Charter School volleyball team did all of our community proud by winning the state championship. And I'm going to ask Angie now if she would to introduce them and, and their coaches, please. I just sound like Coach Hill in the varsity basketball volleyball come up. Congratulations, ladies. Come up. Congratulations. 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 Way to go. Great job. Congratulations. 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 Are you, sir? Congratulations. Great job. Thank you all again for coming. We appreciate it. Thank you all for coming. Not only did they win, but we also had the most valuable player for the whole tournament on that team. Um, Next event is going to be our public comments. This public comment period is set aside to receive comments from the, the general public. Um, so I'll now recognize those individuals who have signed up to speak. Oh, well, they, we have no, we have one and they have taken their name off the list. So. Next, we'll go to the consent agenda and I'm going to get Brian Boyd, our interim city manager, to present that. Uh. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Council uses the consent agenda to consider items that are non-controversial and routine. The consent agenda is acted upon by one motion and vote of the Council. The consent agenda tonight contains the following items. Item number five. Um, this is a call for a public hearing to be held on January 11th, 2022 for annexation of 340.514 acres and to consider a zoning map and text amendment request <coughs> to rezone properties located along Marion Lee Road, U.S. Highway 601, <coughs> White Store Road, parcel ID number 09-125-132 and 09-128-001 from RA20 and RA40 to conditional district, the Greenway at Lake Lee, and to further consider as part of the public hearing a water and sewer developer agreement for the project. Item number six is a budget amendment for council discretionary and travel budget for the remainder of fiscal year 22. This is a request to approve budget amendment BA 2021-19 to provide discretionary and travel budgets for council members Gary Anderson, James Carr, and Julie Thompson in the amount of $2,500 each for travel and $1,500 each for discretionary spending per policy GA-02 and Article 5, Section 2 of the North Carolina Constitution and North Carolina General Statute 168-209 and Policy GA-15, respectively, for a total budget amendment of $12,000. Item number seven, 
are call, call for public hearings to be held on January 11, 2022. A, this is a request to call for a public hearing to be held on January 11, 2022 to consider a zoning map and text amendment request to rezone properties located along East Roosevelt Boulevard, further identified with parcel number 09-121-002A and a portion of parcel 09-121-004 from general business to conditional district Willoughby Park in order to develop 84 single family homes. B. This is a request to call for a public hearing to be held on January 11, 2022 to consider a zoning map and text amendment for property located along Fowler Seacrest Road and further identified as tax parcel 09-298-080. The request is to rezone properties from R40 residential low density to conditional district Blair Place. The rezoning is requested in order to develop a 100 lot age restricted single family development. Additional request is to consider as part of the rezoning public hearing a water and sewer development agreement for the project. C. This request is to call for a public hearing to be held on January 11th, 2022 to consider a zoning map and text amendment for the properties located along West Highway 74 and further identified as tax parcel 09-339-033B, 09-339-159, and 09-339-160. The request is to rezone properties from general business to conditional district exchange apartments in order to develop a 242-unit multifamily apartment complex. Item 8, designation of City Council representatives to Monroe Union County Economic Development Commission's Board of Directors. The City of Monroe and Union County have agreed to form a new entity for economic development activities, the Monroe Union County Economic Development Commission. This commission has six members of the board of directors, three members from Monroe and three members from the county. The recommended members for the commission's board of directors are Mayor Marion Holloway and Councilman Freddie Gordon. Uh, myself as in interim city manager will be a position on the board by right of, of this position as interim manager. Item nine. Energy Services Department Contract Labor Forces. This is to request City Council approve awarding a contract to Utility Line Construction Services, Inc. in the amount not to exceed $350,000 and authorize the interim city manager to approve all necessary documents. There are sufficient funds available in the current budget. The Public Enterprise Committee approved this item to come before Council at their November 16th 2021 meeting. Item 10, Federal Assistance to Firefighters Fire Prevention Grant Application. The Federal Assistance to Firefighters Grant Program is open for applications and staff recommends applying for this grant opportunity. This grant is for firefighter operations and safety equipment and is a 90% federal grant with a 10% city match. The funding request would be for two items. One, a hazardous materials identification instrument. The cost of this item is approximately $97,000. The other item, firefighter turnout gear dryers, one for each of our five fire stations. Total cost for all five gear dryers is approximately $57,000. The total grant application would be approximately $154,000 for both items. Item 11, Information Technology Data Storage System. 
This is a request for City Council approval to purchase a needed expansion of the current storage system in the amount of $288,000 and authorize the interim city manager to procure the equipment and sign any and all documents. The approval of this expansion would create new resources to employees and assist in the securing of data in the case of a cyber attack. Staff is utilizing State of North Carolina ITS 204X contract to secure pricing. Uh, and we are purchasing this at a considerable savings, uh, approximately uh, savings of $455,400. Item 12, minutes and reports. A is disbursement of fiscal year 2021-22 city council discretionary funds. Uh, disbursement from Council Member Saluda Anthony, Union Crisis, Union County Crisis Assistance Ministry, $500, Winchester Alumni Association, $150, the Arc of Union Cabarrus County, $150, Union County Chamber, $60, Community Shelter of Union County, $240. The Arc of Union Cabarrus, uh, $160, <coughs> and Winchester Alumni Association, $210.47. Disbursements for Mayor Bobby Kilgore, Common Heart, $200, The Shepherd's Place, $500. Disbursements for Council Member Franco McGee, Helpers One to Another, $500, Serve Unity Outreach, $500 and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Committee, Inc., $1,000. Financial reports for October 2021. Unassigned general fund balance is $4,558,897. Assigned general fund balance is $2,008,395. Items C through F are various committee and board minutes and reports. G, we have the summary of contracts awarded, change orders approved, and city manager's settlement of claims for November. Contracts and change orders awarded for the month of November 2021 total $753,481.59. There are no settlement of claims to report. Item 13, outside city customer water service request by Pinnacle Homes. Um, this is for addresses 3, 3209 to 3217 Seacrest Shortcut Road. Water Resources Department request approval for outside city services. Pinnacle Homes is requesting water service for five single family homes <coughs> at 3209 through 3217 Seacrest Shortcut Road. No sewer is available. <coughs> All outside city service requests require both city council approval and Union County Board of Commissioner approval pursuant to city ordinances and the water and sewer master agreement with Union County. The Union, Union County Board of Commissioners approved this request at their November 1st, 2021 meeting. Resolutions. This is to request City Council adopt a resolution R2021-77 to lease the property located near Quarry Road, 201 Venus Drive, being a portion of tax parcel number 09-153-036 to the Union County Board of Education and granting authority to the interim city manager to execute any necessary documents. 15 schedules a is the city council meetings for 2022 this is a request for city council to adopt the schedule of city council meetings for 2022 including budget work sessions to be held on january 25th 2022 and april 19th 2022 at 4 p.m b city events for 2022 this is to request City Council to approve the schedule of city events for 2022, including approval for any street closings as needed. 16, 
tax release for October 2021. To approve the tax releases for the month of October 2021 in the amount of $63,083.36. Mayor, that concludes the consent agenda for tonight. <coughs> Thank you. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve the consent agenda. Well, we second. have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor of approving the consent agenda, signify by raising your hand, please. Anyone against? Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, next is a public hearing to consider zoning um, a developer agreement with Dame Brothers LLC for project mill work. The deadline for written comments was 5 o'clock on December the 9th, and council did not receive any. At this time, I'll recognize Economic Development Assistant Director Ron Mall to present this item. Mayor, Council, Manager Bourne, thank you for allowing me to come and share some details tonight um, about Project Millwork. Project Millwork is, is a project that we have brought before you previously, um, and I'm happy to describe it and report that it is with Windsor Window Company. Windsor Window has been here in Monroe since 1993. They currently employ about 330 people. Um, and this project that we are or have been working with them on um, is sizable. It's anywhere from uh, 50 to $80 million of capital investment. And th what they're looking to do is, is establish a brand new um, from the ground up manufacturing facility on land that is contiguous to their current, their current location. Uh, the size of that expansion is 570,000 square feet. So it is, it is indeed one of the larger um, uh, physical pro projects that we've worked on and have here in Monroe. So what I want to show you on the, on, on the screen is the, uh, the WW, thank you, Chief, uh, at the top is where Windsor Windows is located right now. The large sort of polygon trapezoidal uh, um, box, if you will, to the south is the 82 acres of the uh, Commerce Expressway, or Expressway Commerce Park at Monroe that we sold Windsor Windows and we closed on that transaction on November the 8th. The hash marked uh, rectangle is the footprint of the 570,000 square foot structure that Windsor Windows wants to build. And the blue line that runs diagonal is an 18 inch water main that was put in there know, sometime in the 60s, we believe. Uh, but as you can see, it runs right diagonal across the footprint of their building. So obviously we have to move that. With the help of the Water Resources Department, we've, we have uh, come up with an estimate of anywhere from 800 to $850,000 of the cost to relocate that. As part of the incentive package, we reached out to, applied to, and were awarded a, a sum of $554,070 from the Golden Leaf Foundation um, that is, that is a, a part of state government. So again, but we, we also needed to, to be clear with Windsor Windows that um, yes, we've got this grant money, but we want them to be uh, fully engaged in the, 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 the process of relocating that water line. So we are entering into a developer's agreement with Dame Brothers LLC, and that's simply the development arm of Windsor Windows uh, that would obligate Windsor Windows for all costs of the water line relocation above the $554,070 that we have in grant money. So tonight, uh, in order to take advantage of the Golden Leaf funds, uh, we are requesting City Council uh, approve or consider and approve the following items. One, that we accept the grant award from the Golden Leaf Foundation, that we approve the developer's agreement with Dane Brothers LLC that obligates Windsor Windows for the cost of the water main relocation above the grant awards received, approve the budget ordinance, for the water improvements project 
authorize interim city manager Brian Bourne to execute any and all necessary documents. And I did want to point out that we will be bringing this uh, agreement back at a future date to be codified as ordinance. So um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Ron, how many people will they employ with the new addition? Thank you. Thank you, Councilman, for the question. The targeted job creation is 185. The so current 330, and they're looking to add 185. 150 of whom will be within the first couple years. <coughs> so. can, you, can, can you repeat the total amount of the grant? Yes, it's $554,070. Not sure why they couldn't find just a good old round number, but uh, we'll take the free money. Any other questions or comments? No one has signed up to speak for or against the project, so now I'll, I'll take entertain a motion to approve the grantee. You just need to close the public hearing. Uh, either. I'm sorry. Yes, I'll close the public hearing and move to take action. Motion to approve the grantee acknowledgement and agreement from the Golden Leaf Foundation. All right, have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor of the motion, signify by raising your hand, please. Okay. Any uh, opposition? Same. Okay, that carries. Motion to approve developer agreement. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the developer agreement. All in favor, signify by raising your hand, please. Those opposed? Okay. Do we have a motion to approve the capital project budget ordinance? So move. Have second. A, have a motion and a second. Those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Anyone in opposition? Motion to authorize the interim city manager to execute any and all necessary documents. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by raising your hand, please. Any opposed? Uh, likewise. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> next is a public hearing to consider zoning a developer agreement with Century Communities Southeast LLC for Blue Sky Subdivision. The deadline to receive written comments was 5 o'clock p.m. <coughs> on December the 9th, and we did not receive any. At this time, we'll recognize Water Resources Director Russ Colbath to present this item. Good evening, Mayor and Council, Russ Colbath, Water Resource Director. Uh, for your consideration this evening is a developer agreement related to sewer main oversizing within the Blue Sky Subdivision. Blue Sky Subdivision was uh, approved back in the fall of 2019 and it uh, consists of 360 uh, home units. Um, the, the city's water and sewer extension policy allows for strategic oversizing of water and sewer infrastructure uh, that occurs as part of any development. Uh, the decision to oversize is, is based on our master plans, our capital improvement plans, and our standard specifications and details. Uh, based on all the considerations, we have identified the need to oversize certain sewer main segments being installed in the Blue Sky subdivision. Uh, these are shown on uh, a map in your packet. <clears throat> Um, staff feels, uh, staff procured documentation from the developer's contractor about uh, the differential cost oversize from an 8 inch to a 10 inch on one segment and a 8 inch to a 12 inch on a separate segment. And those are shown in the table in your packet. Uh, the bottom line here is that by uh, oversizing these segments, we're going to be able to serve a larger area outside of Blue Sky without having to come back and install new infrastructure. So it's very much cost effective to us in the short term and, and long term. Uh, the total amount of the oversizing is 46496 and some change as shown in your staff report. And so the developer agreement that is in your package um, outlines the terms and conditions for this oversizing and also provides a 5% contingency in case the footage of the lines are uh, a little bit different than the design. Uh, the oversizing can be funded from uh, existing budgeted funds, so we're not asking for any funding tonight. We're simply asking for approval of the developer agreement 
with the same caveat as the previous item that um, we've, we've discovered these developer agreements are going to have to be codified by ordinance. So the ones we approve now we'll be bringing back as a package and doing those um, in working with the city attorney. So with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions. The um, recommended motion is in your staff report. Any comments or questions for, for Russ? Okay, then no one has signed up to speak for or against this project, so I'll now close the public hearing and move to take action. Motion to approve development agreement. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion to approve the developer agreement and a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Those in opposition, likewise. Motion to authorize the NMC to manage executing in all necessary documents. A second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to authorize the interim city manager to execute any and all necessary documents. Those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Those in opposition, do the same there. Okay. And thank you very much. Next is a public hearing to consider zoning. Uh, developer agreement with H and H contractors for Arborwood Townhome Subdivision. The deadline to receive written comments was 5 p.m. on December 9th, and we did not receive any. So we'll once again recognize Water Resources Director Russ Colbath to present this item. Russ, thank you again, Mayor and Council, uh, for consideration this evening is a developer agreement to relocate a uh, large 16-inch water main uh, that's inside of the proposed Arborwood Subdivision. Uh, just a little background, uh, back in uh, 1966, the city signed a utility easement for this 16-inch water line, and it stated that if the uh, water line did not align with the future streets of the subdivision that was proposed at that time, that the city would relocate it at our expense. It's a very unusual way to structure a uh, utility easement, but it happened, and <laughs> now the um, many years passed, the property did not develop. Uh, but uh, recently, uh, the Concord Avenue Overlay District was approved, and that allowed the Arborwood subdivision, uh, consisting of 121 homes, to move forward. Um, so H&H uh, &H Developers is now preparing to break ground on that subdivision. We have been working with their engineers to figure out the best way to relocate this line at the lowest cost to the city. Uh, <clears throat> so... Um, the uh, agreement will allow us, the developer agreement will allow us to do that. The estimated project cost is around $240,000. That's just for materials. We are going to do this work with our own crews, which is a pretty large undertaking. But we'll probably save almost half of, this would be at least double if we contracted at this time. So um, the estimated project cost is $240,000. That'll be the materials to purchase the new uh, water main that will be relocated. Um, the uh, Public Enterprise Committee approved this at their uh, November meeting, and we, uh, as noted in your staff report, we'll be using our um, operating budget to fund this, so we're not asking for any additional funds at this time. Uh, with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions, and the uh, motion, um, recommended motion, is in your packet. Motion to approve developer agreement. I'm actually. I'll, I'll close the uh, public hearing then and we'll take action. Secure. Motion to approve developer agreement. A second. I have a motion and a second to approve the developer agreement. All in favor signify by uh, raising your hand, please. Okay. Those opposed? Okay. Motion to authorize interim city manager to execute any and all documents. I have a motion and a second. Those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. And that clears. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Russ. Uh, hey, you Mayor, I'd like to commend Mr. Colbath. He not only does a good job, he does a great job. Thank you for those savings, Russ. That's job, job going to be well done. Thank you. Just, just don't get us into another one of those agreements that was made in 1962. <laughs> okay, next is a public hearing to consider the abandonment of a section of LaSalle Street from the northern right-of-way of U.S. Highway 74 to the city limits to the north. 
The deadline to submit written comments for this public hearing was 5 p.m. on December the 9th, and council did not receive any. So at this time, we'll recognize Engineering Director Sarah McAllister to present this item, sir. Good evening, Mayor and Council. This is uh, a request was received from Brandon Reeves of RH Holdings of North Carolina to abandon approximately 275 feet of a 60 foot wide public right of way on the South Street, and it extends from the northern right of way of US 74 to the, the city limits. It's highlighted in the map attached. Um, Brandon Reeves now owns the property on both sides within the city limits. Um, we did send this out for uh, comment for the various departments. The fire department approved it, um, provided the business provides access to the back of the building, um, and Water Resources had uh, several comments concerning existing um, infrastructure they have on the property and abandoned infrastructure they have. Uh, RH Holdings acknowledged and agreed to all of the comments, including uh, reserving a 30-foot wide GPUE over the existing utilities. Um, in accordance with the general statutes, we did um, staff took the following um, actions. So a copy of the resolution of intent was sent certified mail to all the adjacent property owners. The street was posted in two places along the road right of way and the resolution of intent was published once a week for four weeks leading up to this public hearing. And there is a resolution included in your packet for consideration to abandon this section of LaSalle Street. <clears throat> Open the floor now for council for any questions or comments. Hearing none, I will close the public hearing and move to take action. Motion to adopt resolution. I second it. We have a motion to adopt the resolution and a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Those in opposition, likewise. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next up is the public hearing to consider prohibiting vehicular traffic on Morgan Street from Main Street to Haines Street. The deadline to receive, uh, re submit written comments was 5 p.m. on December the 9th, and we did not receive any. So at this time, we'll recognize Sarah McAllister again, our engineering director, to present this item. Thank you, Mayor. This is a, a request initiated by staff ahead of the Morgan Windsor Alley <coughs> Improvement Project to prohibit vehicular traffic on Morgan Street between Main and Haines Street. Um, we did route this for comment, and there were a few comments re regarding the existing utilities, but the right-of-way will be retained. It's just closing it to yeah, vehicular right. traffic. Yeah, um, we um, followed the street abandonment procedures and mailed the uh, notice of public hearing to all of the adjacent property owners, including the condo owners and the nearby businesses. We didn't receive any comments, um, and there is an ordinance for your consideration to prohibit the vehicular traffic on Morgan Street. Any questions, comments? Uh, I'll make a comment. I think that's one of the biggest moves we've made in downtown without question. Mm. That's great. Okay. There were no uh, persons signed up either for or against that, so at this time I'll close the public hearing and move to take action. Motion to adopt the ordinance. I second it. Okay, we have a motion to adopt the ordinance and a second. Those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Here's your name, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> next is a request to rezone <coughs> property located at 430 Crow Street, which is tax parcel 09-231-035A from general business to general industrial, and text amendment request to amend code of ordinances. Um, title... Uh, 15 land uses chapter 156 zoning code section 156.106 title the official zoning map uh, so this is a zoning map amendment request to rezone the property at 430 Crow Street we had until 5 p.m. on December 9th to receive uh, written comments and did not receive any so at this time we'll recognize planner Kerry Mendler to present <coughs> Good evening, I'm Carrie Mundler with the Planning Department. Tonight I'm here to present a zoning map amendment request regarding the property at 430 Crow Street. To orient you, the site is highlighted in blue. It is located south of Crow Street and west of Macaulay Street. The applicant is requesting a general rezoning from general business to general industrial. 
The property currently has a 6,000 square foot building on the site, and as the property is currently zoned, it can be utilized for uses allowed within the general business zoning district, including retail sales and service or restaurant. The purple that you see to the north and east is also zoned general industrial, while the pink that you see to the south and west is general business. This property is located in the office and employment classification, classification area of the downtown master plan. Staff is of the opinion that the proposed uh, rezoning to general industrial is consistent with the downtown master plan as office and employment uses are permit permitted in the general industrial district. This is a copy of the future land use map for the downtown master plan. This property is located at the border um, off to the, the top right um, up here, kind of highlighted in the squiggly red. Um, I know there's a lot of colors, but it is right up here um, to the edge of the edge of the downtown master plan. So rezoning notification sign was posted 10 days prior to the public hearing and 10 official rezoning notification letters were also sent to the adjacent property owners within 150 feet, again 10 days prior to this public hearing. Planning board and planning staff recommend approval of this rezoning and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any comments or questions from council? At this time, we'll call uh, to the podium those that have signed up to speak in favor of this project. And the one person is uh, Charlie Griffin. So, Charlie? Mr. Gordon, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I'm the proud owner of 430 Crow Street. So, I'm the one that started all this. Uh, I've been trying to rent the building for some time and found out sort of in a, in a inadvertently there that it was zone GB. All this time I thought that it was zoned essentially the same as a building across the street that I also own. And so this effort is trying to get in parity with my neighbors so that I'll be able to, to rent it to somebody similar. GB I think has mostly for general retail or general business and I don't believe I've got much of a chance of renting it to somebody in that use in that location just now. Any questions for Mr. Griffin? Okay. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. There was no, uh, no one signed up to speak against it, so I'll, at this time I'll close the public hearing and move to take action. Make a motion to adopt the resolution and approve the land development plan. Compliance. Yes, second. Okay, we have a motion and second. Those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Okay. Here's your name. Okay, we have a motion and a second to adopt the ordinance amending section 156.106. And a second. Those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next, we have a public hearing to rezone, consider rezoning map amendment request to rezone properties located along East Roosevelt Boulevard from General Industrial to Conditional District Camp Sutton Nursery. The deadline to submit written comments for this public hearing was 5 p.m. on December the 9th. We did not receive any comments, so at this time we'll recognize Planner Kerry Midler to present the item. Good evening, Carrie Mendler with the Planning Department. Tonight I'll be presenting a conditional district rezoning. The conditional district rezoning process is a voluntary process with mutu mutually agreed upon conditions by the applicant and the city. The conditional rezoning is a site-specific rezoning that creates its own set of requirements through a zoning map and text amendment. The request tonight is for the property located along East Roosevelt Boulevard highlighted in blue. The request is to utilize the property for a commercial greenhouse with on-site retail <coughs> and wholesale sales. Commercial greenhouses require the conditional district rezoning. To orient you to the site, as I stated, the properties are highlighted in blue. This rezoning is, includes this entire parcel to the left 
and the parcel, a portion of this parcel, as indicated with the dashed red line and everything to the left of it. It is located north of East Roosevelt Boulevard and also north of the city, um, city of Monroe um, golf course. The property is currently zoned GI, General Industrial. With the current zoning, it can be utilized for industrial uses such as manufacturing and distribution. The adjoining zoning to the north and east are also General Industrial, which is the purple color. The property to the south is residential, which is the gray color. And the property to the west is an old mixed use special use district for a medical plaza. The applicant is requesting the conditional district in order to utilize the property for a commercial greenhouse with on-site retail and wholesale sales, specifically plants and other landscaping needs such as rock, soil, mulch, etc. The site will also have outdoor storage including shrubs and plants. The proposed structures will maintain a 50-foot setback from East Roosevelt Boulevard and at least a 10-foot setback from all other property lines. <clears throat> the development will also have a 50-foot landscape buffer along East Roosevelt Boulevard and a 25-foot landscape buffer along the eastern property line. Parking lot landscaping will also be provided as indicated on the site plan. This um, large block that you see along East Roosevelt Boulevard is the 50-foot landscape buffer and then of course the um, parking lot landscaping as you can see here as well. Site is proposing a minimum of 30 paved parking spaces. There are no minimum parking requirements for commercial or industrial uses in our current zoning code. Additionally, an eight foot wide sidewalk will also be provided along East Roosevelt Boulevard, which is the um, smaller block that you see here running along the front of the property. The applicant will also be required to provide stormwater management to treat stormwater runoff for the project. The stormwater will be evaluated and reviewed if the project is approved by City Council at the building permit stage of the process, project. As of right now, they are proposing their propo proposed stormwater management facility here on the left side of the site plan. All blue line streams on the site have been provided with a 50-foot buffer on both sides as required by the ordinance. There's a stream just north, but like I said, they do have the 50-foot buffer um, along that stream. The site will be accessed by one entrance off of East Roosevelt Boulevard. As you can see here, there will be a left turn um, over um, into the site on East Roosevelt Boulevard. You'll also be able to turn right into the site as well. Leaving the site, you'll only be able to turn right out though. As I stated, <clears throat> the property will have greenhouses constructed on the site, and they will also have a retail building and storage shed. Metal buildings will be permitted as the industrial district does not have building design standards. So these are just some examples of the um, proposed greenhouses and generally what some of the storage will look like as well. This is just another proposed image of what the greenhouses will look like. The applicant did hold a neighborhood meeting on October 21st, 2021. There were no individuals at this meeting, nor did anyone reach out to the applicant or staff after those letters for the meeting were mailed. The rezoning notification sign was posted 10 days prior to the public hearing, and 16 official rezoning notification letters were also mailed to all the property owners within at least 150 feet, again, 10 days prior to the public hearing. The land development plan indicates this area is located in the manufacturing, logistics, and aerospace character area with a small portion in the medical character area, which is this red. <clears throat> the manufacturing, logistics, and aerospace designation includes the city's existing base of industrial centers. These areas support manufacturing and production at a variety of scales, including assembly and processing, warehousing and distribution, bulk storage, and utilities. Manufacturing, logistics, and aerospace areas are found near major transportation assets such as highway, rail, and or air, and generally are buffered from surrounding development. Clusters of uses that support or serve the similar industrial uses typically locate nearby. The proposed rezoning is consistent with the land development plan as commercial uses are a priority use 
and staff is of the opinion that the proposed project is a reasonable use and in the public interest because it is located along the main corridor where sales oriented businesses would typically locate. Additionally, this use can act, this use can act as a buffer between East Roosevelt Boulevard and additional industrial uses to the north. Planning board and planning staff recommend approval of the rezoning. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have, and the applicant is here as well. Any questions or comments from the council? Here. How did staff and planning board feel? Planning board and planning staff recommended approval. I believe planning board was unanimous in their decision. And Ms. Mandel, let me just confirm now, <clears throat> on 74, Mm -hmm. That is, I'd say, 50 foot, I apologize. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and I noticed there that from 74, there, uh, it seems to be a depth from 74 into the property. And how much is that exactly? You're saying like a, a dip, like depth, a gray dip? The depth from 74 back toward where that landscaping and or, did you say that was a wall? Well, it's a, a the, there's a 50 foot landscape buffer that starts back here. Right. Um, I believe the edge of the pavement for East Roosevelt stops around here and then the right of way would extend beyond that because yeah. the right so of way for right what, what I'm trying to get an idea of is the depth there, the distance between 74 and that. And it looks like it's, you know, fairly shade, uh, 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 screened, you know, mm -hmm. as far as that goes from 74. I, I didn't know if I was asking the right person for the. Yeah, I, I could defer to the applicant. If I had to guess, maybe 100 feet, and I'm just using this 50-foot buffer from maybe the edge of pavement back to where about the sidewalk ends, yeah. okay. um, and then another 50 feet of actual landscaping. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments? There was no one signed up to speak for or against, so now I'll close the public hearing and move to take action. Motion to adopt resolution approving land development plan components. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Okay, it carries unanimously. Um, motion to adopt ordinance amending section 156.106. Here we have a motion and a second. Those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Motion to adopt ordinance amendment code section 156-98. A second. Here we have a motion and a second. Those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, that's very good. Thank you very much. <clears throat> the next is a public hearing to consider a zoning map amendment request to rezone the property located at 1404 East Franklin Street from office transitional to district district 1404 East Franklin Street. The deadline to submit written comments for the public hearing was 5 p.m. on December the 9th of this year. Council did not receive any written comments. So at this time, we'll recognize again Kerry uh, Miller to present this item. Good evening, Carrie Mendler with the Planning Department. Tonight I'm presenting a zoning map and text amendment request by the Humane Society of Union County. Again, this is a conditional district um, similar to the last one. This is for the property at 1404 East Franklin Street. The request is to rezone the property in order to allow a spay, neuter, veterinary clinic and retain all of the OT uses. To orient you to the site, the property is highlighted in blue. It is located south of East Franklin Street and is located east of East Sunset Drive. Also to the north is the hospital and also to the west is the uh, Monroe High School. The subject property is currently zoned office transitional. Adjoining zoning to the north is currently zoned conditional district CMC Union. Property to the east and south is zoned office transitional, which is this blue color that you see. And then property to the west is zoned conditional district Monroe High School. 
The property currently has a 7,284 square foot building and a paved parking area with approximately 50 parking spaces. <clears throat> the request is to rezone the property in order to allow a spay neuter veterinary clinic and retain all of the OT uses. No changes to the site or building are proposed as part of this rezoning. The site has existing trees, however, due to some overhead power lines and limited space on East Franklin Street, the applicant isn't proposing any additional landscaping either. This is just a layout of the existing site with the existing building and the existing parking lot as it is today. The land development plan indicates this area is in the traditional development character area. The develop, traditional development surrounds the downtown core and is anchored by the city's most historic neighborhoods. Dense access to transportation network offers easy access to the downtown, and the design and scale of neighborhoods encourages active living and affords residents the ability to live, work, shop, and play within a walkable community. Office and medical uses are listed as priority uses in this character area, so the proposed use is consistent with the land development plan and staff believes that the proposed use is also reasonable and in the public interest. A rezoning notification sign was posted 10 days prior to the public hearing, and 12 official rezoning notification letters were sent to the adjacent property owners within at least 150 feet of the subject property, again, again 10 days prior to the public hearing. Planning board and planning staff do recommend approval of the rezoning, and I'll be happy to answer your questions you may have. Any comments or questions from council? <clears throat> okay, at this time I'll call to the podium an individual who's signed up to speak in favor of the project. Uh, you've got uh, three minutes. Uh, Laura, is that correct? Yes, yeah. sir. And if you would give your name and address to the clerk, please. Laura Sir, 4416 Roundwood Court, Indian Trail 28079. I'm with the Board of Directors for the Humane Society, so I'm basically here to answer any questions that you all may have. This facility will double the size of our current spay-neuter clinic. We're currently booked out more than six weeks in advance, and people, um, their pets are, can have babies in that amount of time, so we're trying to help reduce that number from happening. And um, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any comments or questions for Ms. Sir? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. No one had signed up uh, in opposition, so I'll close the public hearing now and move to take action. Motion to adopt resolution approving land development plan for Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Okay, thank you very much. Motion to adopt resolution. The nine, oh, we don't have to do that one, do we? Motion to adopt ordinance amendment section 156-106. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. <laughs> motion to adopt ordinance amendment section 156-98. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. <clears throat> Those in favor, please signify by raising your hand, please. Right, that's good. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you all for coming and for what you do. Certainly appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And now we'll have um, recognized safety and risk coordinator Alvina Ayoka right, to present uh, this following item. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Good evening. Um, Alvina Nako, I'm the safety and risk coordinator um, for the city, and I do fall under um, human resources. I am here requesting that council approve the contract we have with um, Gallagher as their current broker for um, our excess workers' compensation that increased um, for the annual year. From seventy-two thousand nine sixty-eight to eighty-two thousand seven eighty-nine, and for the aviation incre increase from thirty-six thousand four fifty to forty-two thousand eight twenty-nine for the annual premium. 
Um, the excess workers' compensation market saw um, increases in the last two years that the city had protection from due to a two-year policy we had. So between 2019 and 2021, we were, you know, grandfathered into our current policy. Due to COVID, all of that has changed, but because we were in that two-year policy, it did not affect us. However, during renewal for this current year, that did have an impact on the market rate in terms of what we saw for our premium, which caused the increase from what we originally budgeted for. So staff recommends the approval of the increase in premium for the excess workers compensation for our current carrier, Midwest employers, in the amount of 82,789. Staff also recommends the approval of increase in premiums for aviation insurance for current carrier, ACE property and casualty insurance in the amount of 42,829. And staff also recommends the authority for the interim city manager to execute all and any necessary documents. Any questions, comments? So you said the increase for the aviation was due to COVID? What was the so, yes, we were in uh, multi year contracts. So, because of that, we didn't see any increases, and the premium from 19 and 20 were the same. However, this year we were up for renewal, and because of COVID and you know, supply and demand, all of that has shifted all the premiums that the insurance carriers have <coughs> you know, given out. So, that caused um, a change for about $6,379 for the aviation. You said the company was Gallagher? Gallagher is our broker. Um, the workers' comp is through Midwest. So they're all still the same. It's just the premiums have increased. How long have we had this insurance with them? For Midwest? Yeah. We've had it about 10 years now. Any other questions? Any other questions? Yeah. Comments? Like everybody here was going up. Item entertaining a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the increase in premium for excess workers' compensation to Midwest employees. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Those in opposition, the same. Motion to approve increase in premiums for aviation insurance to ACE property and casualty. Second. Here we have a motion and second to approve the increase in premium. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Okay. Motion to authorize the interim city manager to execute any and all necessary documents. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Those in favor? Please signify by raising your hand again. Thank you very much. And that is if Brian Bourne pays it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Next, I'd like to recognize the city attorney, Majeev Shakan, to present the uh, item of rules and procedures for the uh, motion process. Thank you, Mayor. The Council at the November 9, 2021 meeting, the uh, prior council approved resolution R-2021-89, which instructed my office to begin the process to draft rules of procedure for the A motion process. Uh, that would be uh, a process that would be geared toward um, consideration of a motion with respect to council member Angelie and Nicole James. So the first thing we were to do is to prepare the uh, rules, and the second would be to also prepare a petition for a motion. So the rules are what you have in front of you tonight. Um, I know I sent this to all the council, I believe, on Wednesday, and what we wanted to note is a couple of important things. The process will be a two-part hearing. The first will be a hearing that takes place uh, with a hearing officer. We've retained Alicia McDowell at Moore and Van Allen in Charlotte to conduct the hearing. Uh, that will then be a hearing where she will serve essentially as the role of a judge. The presentation of the case will be made by the city. In that case, we've retained Tara Bright with the uh, Charlotte office of Pointer School. You may remember Pointer School was involved in our UDO review. They also have significant litigation and municipal law experience. 
Uh, they will present the city's case. Councilmember James will have the ability to have someone on her behalf present her case, and it will be held before the hearing officer. This way, the hearing officer will handle the uh, hearing, which will be a one or two day hearing. It will be open to the public, and then the intention will be that the hearing will be streamed out later on the city's YouTube page, a uh, YouTube channel. What will happen is within 30 days after the end of that hearing, uh, Ms. McDowell will produce a written set of recommendations to the council, a findings of fact, conclusions of law and recommendations, and then the council will hold the second part of the hearing where they will receive a presentation from Ms. McDowell, and then each side, the city's representative and uh, Councilmember James's representative, will have 30 minutes apiece to present their arguments uh, for and against removal, if depending on the recommendation. And then that will be the opportunity for council to then act on the a motion process. Uh, again, that will also be a public hearing. As I mentioned in the uh, in the email, we and I believe in the staff report, the goal is to conduct the uh, hearing before the hearing officer in mid-January, and then that would then lead to about 30 days later a hearing before the council in mid-February. And uh, the rules are what they are. They basically were developed by my office and also the hearing officer to ensure that the process is fair, respects due process, and, and has a clear process throughout. We did not involve either the representatives for the city or any representative for Councilmember James in the process. So this was done solely by an eye office and the hearing officers, uh, the hearing officer's office. So I'm happy to answer any questions about the proposed rules. And then with respect to the actual vote, I would again note for those that were here at the November 9 meeting and then also for a, a separate meeting when a issue was concer concerning the payment of individual expenses. This would be a matter that involves Councilmember James's official conduct. She has the right to recuse herself from voting on this item and if she does not recuse herself, Council has the right to excuse her from voting on the item. I'm happy to answer any questions any member of Council has. So, Councilman James got a question. So you said your office and the hearing office came up with these procedures and rules? The hearing officer, Ms. McDowell, and my office created the rules. Yes. The attorney that we have retained to present the case was not involved. You were not involved and involved. And as I understand it currently, you do not yet have an attorney retained on your behalf. So we did not contact them either. Typically, the way these are handled is that the <coughs> process for creating rules for process are done by the hearing officer and the attorney representing the city council, not any of the parties involved because then they would have the ability to impact the rules. This way, the rules are fair, they're clean, and they reflect what uh, the standards are required under North Carolina's consideration of the A-Motion because as I read the rules, it states in there that you will speak if need to be. So therefore, you are excusing yourself to speak in any manner? No, ma'am. Uh, and in fact, I, I, that's not what it says. What it says is that I will represent the council at the second phase of the hearing. That is, I will assist the council at the second phase of the hearing, just as I do here. The When the hearing is actually held, it does say the city attorney or their designee. In this case, we have designated Ms. Bright to present the case on behalf of the city. I will be at the hearing, but I will not be presenting the case on behalf of the city. Ms. Bright will, just as whoever you retain will be presenting the case on your behalf. I will be sitting in the room to monitor what's going on, but I will not be arguing the case. Okay, okay, just make it clear. So, so you're saying that you won't have any say-so to speak? I, that's, I, I don't think you're given... That's what you're, I'm trying to get understanding. No, what the understanding is I will not present the case to the hearing officer. 
That's Correct. what I, I will not be presenting the case of the hearing officer. I will be here with counsel for the second phase of the hearing to assist counsel in any legal questions and legal issues it has at that time. I will not be presenting the case to counsel. As I've said, Ms. Bright will be presenting the case to the hearing officer. All right, correct. But the recommendations will be made by then the hearing officer, not by Ms. Bright. Ms. Bright and then whoever you retain will have a 30-minute period to make their arguments. I will not be making those arguments. I will be here with counsel advising the members of counsel that are duly authorized to hear the case, to hear the case. Okay, again, the question is, so you're saying you're going to be here to assist counsel, which I am counsel, right? So can you, so how are you going to assist me and them? So are you, are you saying that you're not going to assist me as a council member? Because I, because you work for me, correct? Well, I, 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 your boss, right? I'm just trying I, to get I work, I, I work for the council. Correct. I would also note that for purposes, as if you had read the rules, the hearing is intended to be before the six council members that are not the subject of the hearing. Correct. I read that, that would be a situation where council would, and I would recommend, council would excuse you from being part of the process because you, it's not fair for you to sit in judgment of yourself. However, and the rules are clear, since this involves your official conduct, you could either recuse yourself or council would excuse you. I would represent council and serve to assist council. You would most likely not be at the dais for that second phase of the hearing. So I would like to make a motion to extend this for 30 days so I can get legal action to look at this. Because I'm saying, as I read some of this stuff, it's a lot of stuff in here because it talks about fair and impartial hearing before a fair and impartial city council. So how can you be fair and impartial? It's just a lot of questions that I've got that legal council need to look at this to make sure that the rules and procedures, because as you stated, you looked at it, the hearing officer looked at it, but then again, you're talking about advising council. How can you advise council about rules that you've made up? Because again, listen, this has never been done before, so this is some stuff that you had to make up and come up with, you and the hearing officer. So I don't understand how it's going to be impartial if you're going to play a role in any of this. Okay, a few things. There's a lot of questions to unpack. First off, this has been done before. This has been since 1935, at least four separate occasions, two of which actually reached a hearing. The other two did not reach a hearing. So this was not based on we're making stuff up. This was based largely on processes used by New Hanover County and the city of Fayetteville. Now, second, the bias issue, you contend a bias on my part. That's not relevant. The bias issue is the fair and impartial decision maker is the council. Now, under the one case in North Carolina that has actually reported the issue, it recognizes that under the rule of necessity, that even if there may be opinions held by council, the power given in an A motion proceeding only belongs to the council. So it is possible there may be some bias, but the council has to work towards, and the rules Oxlow say, has to work towards being as unbiased as possible. Now, you're suggesting that your colleagues cannot be unbiased. I think your colleagues can be unbiased and hear what they have to hear because they know, after reading the rules, that the matter will be based on what comes in the hearing. There's the two day, the one or two day long hearing process before the hearing officer will lead to a set of recommendations that will then be presented to the council. So it will not be things outside of what happened in the hearing, that if you had cut them off in traffic one day, that is not part of the process. What is presented in the hearing is the process, is what's going to be considered. So with respect, I understand your concern and it is, you're wishing to delay the process. We would recommend to council that the process move forward, but it is up to council to decide when it would happen. 
I would note that after the rules are adopted, the next important time frame would be when the petition in a motion goes out. When it goes out, within seven days of that, a notice would be provided to all parties stating when, in a minimum of 20 calendar days, the first part of the hearing would begin. So we believe that you know, it's everyone has you know, the time to move forward. It is up to council to decide what it wishes to do. I would not recommend that you delay this, but it is council's rules and we are following, I think, the request of council in this process. As again, as I state and continue to state, there's a lot of rules in here and you talked about unbiased. As I have, I nominated myself for Mayor Pro Tem, didn't get a second, so you could say a lot about unbiased. I'm saying even with Robert Yenisek, I'm saying, again, as I looked at the appointments, again, there was another guy voted. So we can talk about unbiased. So again, this needs to be delayed. Council, I'm talking to. So legal can look at this. If we talk about impartial, fairness, that's the right thing to do. I would note for council that the, the members that were served before today are aware that we have advised council member James repeatedly uh, that to please identify a legal, a legal counsel. Um, we have only received one response that said she did not yet have an attorney but was working on getting an attorney. Right. However, this has been repeatedly provided to her since this process became clear that council was directing us to move forward. These rules just came Wednesday. These rules just, I just got an attorney, so therefore he needs due process, council and mayor, to look at this. Well, that's who I'm talking to, council and mayor. Was that y'all the ones making the decision? Could you Thank please you. identify your attorney as we've asked you to do that? I will after uh, council votes. <clears throat> well, uh, um, mayor, this is a matter for council. If you yes. wish to hear from the public, you can, but this is a matter for council. Now this is this is for council too. So I appreciate your willingness, but this is this is council. And, and Mayor, you do have Council Member James has made a motion, but it has no second. I do not know if any member of council wishes to second that motion for a delay of some indeterminate period for consideration. I said thirty days. My my motion was sorry, thirty days. days. Thank okay. you. To let to delay it for thirty days. So my legal counsel can take a look at these rules and procedures so they're not unbiased and impartial. Mayor, there apparently appears to be no second. You may wish to call for a second to determine if there is one. If there is no second, the motion dies. Is there a second to Councilman James's uh, uh, proposal? Hearing none, it fails for lack of a second. Mayor, I'll make the motion to approve the rules as presented by the count, our attorney. I'll second that. Well, we have a motion and a second to approve. Um, <clears throat> all those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Those opposed, uh, likewise. Okay. That this passes six to one, Mayor, with Councilmember James in opposition, remain of council in support. Mayor, if I may ask now that Councilmember James advised that once Council made a vote, she would identify her attorney. Would My you attorney be in contact with you. Well, that's not what you'd said. You said, you. you said that you would identify the attorney. But okay. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Council. Okay. <clears throat> uh, next will be the, uh, I'll recognize Councilmember uh, Gordon to introduce the Citizens Appointment Committee recommendations. Uh, Mayor and Council, I will say that uh, these are a little bit longer and more of them than normal, uh, but it happened to be the end of the year and some new rules uh, and some terms ending on various chairmen of these committees. And so if you will indulge my uh, ability uh, to pronounce hopefully most of these names, I will state them now. To the ABC Board, we appoint Terry Scholler to be the chair, effective date 1122 through 123122. 
Also to the ABC board, we appoint Frank Garrett to a full term to replace Steve Louder. Effective date, 1-1-22 to 12-31-24. And the second appointment to the board is uh, Gary Roderick to the ABC board for a full term to replace Gil Rushing. That was 1-1-22 <coughs> to 12 31 24. Next board is a board of adjustment. We appoint Ken Dale Deal to chair uh, for a one-year term, 1-1-22, one, one, uh, excuse me, two years through 12 31 23. And we also appoint George Smith to vice chair of the Board of Adjustment, same time frame. To the Charlotte Monroe Executive Airport Commission, we appoint, reappoint Patrick Furr to a full term as a non-city member. This would be a two-year term, 1-1-22, 2022 to 12-31-2024. We also appoint to the Charlotte Monroe Executive Airport Howard John Stevens to a full term to, to replace Ken Hagler. Effective date 1-1-22 to 12-31-2024. And then also to appoint William Dotson to a full term to replace Bob Smith. 1-1-22 to 12-31-24. As to the Downtown Advisory Board, we appoint Joyce Rentschler to chair, one year term, 1 1 22 to 12 31, uh, two years, excuse me, 23. We appoint Jason Wally, I believe, to vice chair uh, of the downtown advisory board, 1 1 22 to 1 12 31 24. We reappoint Kay Claren to a full term, two year. 1 1 22 to 12 31 24 and also reappoint Marie Starnes to a full term 1 1 22 to 12 31 24 and appoint Heather Rieger to a full term to replace Susan Radford 1 1 22 to 12 31 24 in regards to the Fireman's Relief Advisory Board we appoint Todd Price to a full term as chair to replace William Hall, 1 1 22 to 12 Also appoint J. Brent Collins to a full term as vice chair to replace Billy Canuck, 1 1 22 to 12 23. For the Monroe Tourism <laughs> Development Authority, we appoint Arpen. Bakta to a full term as a hotel representative, 1 1 22, 12 31 To the Parks and Recreation Commission, we appoint Rhonda Griffin to chair to replace Dan Shy, 1 1 22, effective to 12 31 22. We appoint Tiffany Wilson to the full term as vice chair to replace. Moya Saltzgaber, Parks and Recreation Commission, 1 1 22, 12 31 24. As regards to the planning board, we appoint Richard Yerchek to a full term as chair to replace Marianne Raspberry, 1 1 22 to 12 31 26. Also to the planning board, we appoint Jennifer Smith to vice chair to replace Richard Yerchak, 1-1-22-12-31-23. Also to the planning board, Archie Morgan from an alternate to a regular member to replace Mary Ann Raspberry, 1-1-22-12-31-23. And to the Public Safety Committee, we appoint Chip Wardwell to a full term, one one 2022, 1231, 2023. This is the motion uh, of the committee. We'll entertain a motion to approve. I got a question first. 
Um, with, um, did we say the chair and the vice chair had to roll off a year, or was it just the chair? Chair and vice chair. Okay, so your check is on the planning board as vice president, vice chair. So how did he move to chair if he didn't roll off? If he not rolling off a year? It would be that his term had not, he had not reached the term limit. It's if the term limit, what happened is the council approved removing the term limit exemption for chairs and vice chairs, but your check was not yet at the two full term uh, requirement to roll off. So he could move up to chair as long as he continues to be able to meet the have not completed two full term requirement. Another question um, uh, for you, Brian. Um, when do when does stuff have to be submitted to Bridget in order to get on the agenda? It's uh, two weeks prior. So how did it get the council appointment for me to get on Friday at about 63 p.m.? The committee voted to make an exception, so commissions would not have to go without meeting. There were some that needed to meet prior to the next, before the, uh, the submission was made for minutes at the next meeting. So they made that exception. So, so, so exceptions can be made in order for things to get on the agenda? If the committee made that recommendation, the appointment committee made that recommendation. So you're saying that the appointment committee made that recommendation? Yes. Made the recommendation. It was agreed to by those that are able to also place items on the agenda. And this is one of those circumstances where if council disagrees with placing it, council can make that decision. But in this case, the concern was with an absence of chair and vice chair for the, some of these commissions and committees that they would not be able to carry out their work. And some would be required to meet in that period of time between the end of the year and January 11th but then they couldn't meet, which would then delay work such as, for example, the planning board would not be able to meet and provide recommendations to the city council. Thus, a project that through no fault of the applicant zone or planning staff would be delayed because the appointment had not been made. There was an exception and it was requested by the committee and it is up to council whether or not it wishes to push forward. Did you make a motion? Uh, I will make a motion that these uh, appointments be approved. Yes. Second. I have a motion to approve appointments and a second. Those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Those opposed, likewise. Okay, motion carries. There being no other items on the agenda, I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. We have a motion to adjourn and a second. All in favor? Uh -huh. And I wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor. Uh, I want to say one thing. Congratulations. Congratulations.